Do you pray like a pagan or do you pray like a Christian? Hello, my name is Trey Talley. I'm the pastor of the church at Pecan Creek located in Denton, Texas. How do you pray? Many Christians find that their prayer life is actually more resembling of how pagans used to pray in the Bible. And today that's what we're going to look at, trying to get our prayer habits to line up with who we are as a Christian. So we're going to turn to 1 Kings chapter 18, and I'm going to to condense this chapter down to a few little sections here just for this the point that we're talking about but uh the, the people of god had gone astray they were following the prophets of Baal and were worshiping him and not the one true god so there was going to be a a competition between the prophets you might say elijah being the prophet of god and many hundreds of prophets of Baal. and they were going to see which prophet uh would and could uh, have the animal burned up on the altar supernaturally. So let's see what happens here. Um, in verse 25 of 1 Kings chapter 18, Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first, for you are many, and call upon the name of your God and put no fire to it. And they took the bull that was given them, and they prepared it and called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon, many hours, saying, O Baal, answer us, but there was no voice, and no one answered. And they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is a god, little g there. Either he is musing, or he is relieving himself, yes, that means what it sounds like, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. And as midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. So, I want to take a few notes of how pagans pray to their God. It went on for hours and hours and hours and hours. They keep repeating the same thing. They're, they're trying to get the attention of their God. They're, doing, they're, they're abusing themselves or even cutting themselves. They're, they're running around the altar over and over and over until they're absolutely exalted, exhausted, but yet there is no answer from their God. And it's all, if you notice this, they're trying to get the attention of God. And that's what Elijah makes fun of them with. He said, you know, is your, is your God on a trip? Maybe he's gone somewhere and he can't hear you. Or maybe he's musing. Maybe he's thinking about something else. Or even that your God, supposed God, is relieving himself. And he's not paying attention to you. So do something more to get his attention. All right, so that's how pagans pray. They try to work and, and repeat and get the attention of God. And oftentimes Christians do the same thing. But as we covered last week in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, we should know who we are as children of God and have confidence that God hears us when we pray. And we do not have to work up ourselves into an emotional frenzy or physical frenzy or do anything to get the attention of God. We have an advocate before the Father, and it's Jesus Christ Himself, the very one who has paid the price for our sins. So we have confidence when we go to God that He hears us. Nothing is required of us as far as getting His attention. And we also note that our God, the one true God, is omniscient and knows all things and sees all things and does not look away and get distracted or by anything near that. So, let's move on. Sorry, getting distracted. Verse 36 and verse 38, let's see how a Christian prays. Let's see how a man of God prays Elijah. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Okay, so what did Elijah do to pray? Did he, did he have to run around the altar? Did he have to yell? Did he have to abuse his body? Did he have to do anything to get the intention of God? And of course, the answer is no. He simply began to speak to God, and he had the full attention of God. As we see, his prayer is answered. Now, uh, what does Elijah do to get the attention of God? 
Again, nothing. And he has confidence, immediate confidence, that God hears him when he prays. Now, the question is, do you pray like a Christian or do you pray like a pagan? Uh, a Christian can do the same thing that Elijah did. And you might say, well, I'm, I'm not Elijah. Uh, well, we, we look over at the New Testament. We see that the greatest prophet uh, of all the, the Old Testament prophets, you might say, is not Elijah, but it's actually John the Baptist. I know we find him in the New Testament, but he is the greatest prophet, Jesus says. And even he, as great as he is, uh, Jesus goes on to say in verse 28 of Luke 7, that uh, he says this of John the Baptist, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So we find that John the Baptist is greater than Elijah, but we also find that, that you, as a believer, are greater than John the Baptist. So you have confidence, is what I'm saying, the very same confidence, tying this back to Elijah, that he had when he prayed, all he had to do is speak and knew he knew that God heard him. Same with John the Baptist, and it's exactly the same with you. Except you should even know more so this information because you now have the completed gospel that you can rest in and know that God has paid the price for your sins and you have confidence before Him when you pray. So what do you do to get the attention of God? You don't. Christ has already done that for you. You are born again. You have an immediate audience with God. God the Father. Even when Jesus is instructing his disciples to pray, and they ask him, how should we pray? Uh, he simply says, go into your closet and pray. Uh, nothing else is required. There, there's nothing more needed of us. Christ has done all the work for our salvation and to, uh, to get you into the presence of the Father. All you do now is speak. So, uh, long story short, don't pray like a pagan. Pray like a Christian. Have confidence that God hears you because He does. Thanks for listening.